essential for me. It's a lot easier if you're immersed in it, right? Like you have yeah. to live it. And in Miami, it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. You know, when I decided I was committed to doing this, like in 2016, I made sure I went to all the, the Latin clubs. I mm -hmm. made sure every, all the music I consumed, all the, you know, the, the TV I consumed was in Spanish, right? Yeah. What are some of the, the tactics that you've used along the way to kind of help you get ahead as far? Yeah. So, uh, you know, w w with what I said before, me being from Chicago helped out tremendously um, because, like I said, there's a lot, of, a lot of Mexicans, a lot of Puerto Ricans. So I started playing soccer when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. And that made me really want to learn more because you would hear things like, oh, centrala or cabecita. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what does this stuff mean? But it sounds so beautiful. I want to I learn that language. Mm -hmm. So what I did back then, I would watch telenovelas. I would uh, listen to the music like uh, mm -hmm. Aventura, you know, bachata, reggaeton, mm -hmm. all those things. Now, I had no clue what they were saying at all. When I first started uh, listening to these things, zero idea. But I do believe that it helped me to develop a non-American uh, accent when, when I spoke Spanish. Right. You know, so it went, when I speak Spanish now, I can imitate a lot of different accents, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when, when, I, when I practice and when I'm in the, in the mood for it. Uh, and I think that that came from those little inputs of me listening to, to this or that mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, singing along to the songs or repeating what somebody said on, on a show, uh, just things like that. So that was the beginning of my immersion, immersion process. And then, you know, I got to the point where I was a little more bold and I started to speak to people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, I have a best friend. He's Colombian and black. His dad is Colombian. Mm -hmm. His mom's black and his mom. You know she's black. She speaks 100 percent Spanish as well. Like just like, like a, a like, a like a Colombian probably. I, well, now I, I thought it was Colombian when I was when I was a kid, but I was just in LA to to visit him for his birthday in 2019, mm -hmm. and I heard her speak Spanish, and it didn't really sound so so Colombian anymore. Oh, <laughs> so okay. I think before I knew it, right. um, I thought it was Colombian. But no, she speaks, but she speaks it perfectly still. Mm -hmm. um, I can't even pinpoint her accent though. But her husband, you know, he is from Medellin, Colombia. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that really, really influenced me to, to learn it a lot, you know, to really be over there four or five days out of the week, listening to the salsa, la cumbia, mm -hmm. hearing them communicate. Um, my best friend's grandma doesn't know English, so mm -hmm. she was already speaking in Spanish. I'm like, I have to learn this. I have to learn this. So, right. Yeah. For me, it was, it, it seemed like the grammar and the, the learning the meaning of the words is the easy part mm -hmm. to get your tongue and to, to, to be able to make the sounds and, and because if you're accustomed to if your 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 syllables are tuned to one language, it's very hard to tune them to another language mm -hmm. and not use the syllables and the vowel sounds from English when you're speaking Spanish. So that's why I think music was such a big part for me. Yes. As far as bro, I would literally on Snapchat. You know, you'll take a video of a Snapchat, yeah. and then if you just let it sit there, it'll just loop that same video until you post it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I would I would I would be in my car and I would you know four bars of like an Anuel song or an Ozuna song, and I would just record it and I would literally just put it on my center console in my car and let it loop and just play wow. that four bar lyric over and over and over and I would just listen to it in the car uh -huh. 30 minute drive did the same four lines of a song over and over until I could oh. repeat it you know what I'm saying that, like, that's heavy yeah I like that I like that because even if you don't know what you're saying you're still saying something and getting used to those sounds right like one of the first songs that I <laughs> that I heard in Spanish uh, it was a song by this guy named Bobby Pulido called um, I think it's called Enseñame mm -hmm. and one of the lines he's like y abrázame y dime que me quieres mm -hmm. back to, when, when I was listening to that and I was I don't know maybe 10 years old mm -hmm. I thought he was saying jabrasame y dime I'm like I don't know what jabrasame means but right. that's, that's what I kept saying right. so even though I was saying the wrong thing I was still getting used to uh, the pronunciation of the Spanish. So that's, yeah, that's crazy that you did that. You know, the whole repeat thing. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I uh, advocate for. I tell people all the time, repeat is going to be your best friend when you're learning a language. Mm -hmm. put, put, or like watch a video, listen to a podcast, listen to something and rewind it until you get it. That, mm -hmm. That's what's really going to help you to solidify that. You know, like if you want to sound like a native, at, at least, you know. Mm -hmm.